Stephen Everett. Eric Gilbertson. Steph Fisher. Benjamin King. For anybody who's not here and been here before, we are an advisory committee to the Development and Review Board. We will listen to the applications on the agenda and move them forward. And do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor of the agenda, raise your hand. Agenda is approved. Unless anybody has anything else to add, we'll go straight to the first application for 22 State Street. He also needs to do further exploration of the peers. I thought he's the right word under the porch. So that's all being looked at. The number that he gave us of twenty thousand dollars represents the worst case scenario and all the things for total um, uh, replacement of all of these pieces. But it's our intention to re restore it to its original look. Um, so that's what the twenty thousand represents. We don't have to go that far, but we're prepared to do so if we need to. Um, as for the repainting, we've done a lot of research for old house aficionados, and this is actually our fourth house, old house that we've, antique house that we've restored. Um, and we've done a lot of research into the period, and we know that Victorians typically would have at least three colors, that there'd be a name, body color, then a trim color, and then an accent color, which is what you see on the current color scheme. And that's basically what we want to replicate in sort of a different order, if you will. At present, the body of the house is a kind of a creamy color, and the porch uh, and the, the accents of the trim, I should say, is a teal color, and then the accent color is a kind of a rusty color. So we're just kind of wishing to mix it up a little bit. We would like to go. I have some of the chips that are very okay, similar. Okay, are these, to the, are these yes. the same numbers? Okay, because I can pass these around. I brought yeah, these from okay, the original right, application. Right, we haven't like nailed down the exact shade, and actually, I was told that those chips represent a very expensive line of paint. So <laughs> so something for, something yes. similar to this. In that range, exactly. But what we want to do is just sort of mix up the order of those, if you will. So the body of the house would be teal, and it would be a darker, it would be a bluer, slightly darker teal, which is what you see there. Then the trim would be the creamier color, and the accent color would be a rusty sort of apricot color, maybe a little bit. Those photos show it to be kind of a color anyway. Um, so something in that realm. And actually, we most recently talked about maybe painting the door, which needs repair. I would have loved to have left it. We would have loved to have left it just as a uh, wooden without paint on it. But it has a lot of dings and cracks, and, and we'll, we'll also like to propose that maybe we paint the color potentially this color which didn't show up yet. So so that's basically the gist of it. I guess you move that this around. So uh, the the columns. The columns. Are you if you have to replace are you replacing the composite or actual wood? What's, what's um I believe he was talking about wood. Okay. That is my understanding. And then the deck, the porch or yes. Are you Replacing with like or with like, yes. Okay, so it would um, be wood as well. It would be wood, yes, it would be. Mm -hmm. Not gap to the be as is shown. Right, tongue yes, and yes. Usually exactly. it's tongue and groove fur, right. a really tight grain fur, which will. He did talk last. about fur, yes. Yeah. He said the one difference would probably be that in examining those four boards, he saw that they were cross cut. I don't even know what that means, but he said it was it wasn't possible to cut with the shoe finish all the time. Okay. So anyway. So they were quarters on. Quarters on. I think that's right. Okay, okay, thank you. And that probably wasn't going to be available, but it would most likely be for, and it, it, in, in any case, it would as closely replicate the existing board. It's available possible. if you want to pay for it. <laughs> oh, maybe that's what he was getting at. That we didn't want to bump us. <laughs> he's, trying to keep your, he's trying to keep your bid somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. Small. So you guys were running. <laughs> so how about the stair itself? Are you doing um, replacing that. Or That's... we replace, and we would uh, <coughs> want to try to want to put a different railing on it. Uh, preferably wood railing, you know, metal and all that. on there now. It's obviously functional. It, and it isn't, uh, it isn't a period at all. It looks very fast. No, yeah. it's a particularly functional. Yeah, it's, it's very rusted. Did you do any paint scrapings by any chance to see if you could get down to 
early color. Um, what is exposed in the, I would almost call it exfoliating paint at this point, yeah. it's been, it's, uh, is, is the wood, there's almost nothing that you can see as the wood, as the paint is coming off, it just, there's, no, no. there's nothing that so there's Sometimes you can get up underneath the clavers where it's not weathered, you can just take a knife or something and scrape it. And we haven't gotten that far with it. It's just that there is quite a bit exposed. But the other uh, thing I doubt very much if the shutters are original um, because they don't they don't work. Yeah. Well, I, I don't have to totally decided on that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> my, my goal is to have everything much like it is now, but it's, you know. I, I don't think they would have been original for that. Well, they, don't, they don't work because they won't close over the window. They're too, yeah. they're too narrow to close. It's over. just, it's, they're just decorative. Somebody yeah. added them at a later date. And on the front of the house, it's only the upper two windows that have the shutters on them right. anyway. So. Yeah. I'm on your side. Yeah. <laughs> 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 in columns, I was up on a project today that okay. was using, um, it's like a cement fiberglass um, column that seemed actually, I was quite impressed with it. Not a lot of nice details can do it. It was very smooth and it seemed like a reasonable replacement for something like that. And it looked identical to the, a wooden one that would accept paint and wood. Wouldn't it have a lot of capabilities. Would it be dur as durable potentially? I mean, more durable. More durable. Small, but you might want to just go knock on the door and say hi. Yeah. They were installing it. So, is that something that we could leave open if, if the contractor comes back to us with that kind of an option that we discuss? Seth is going to help So, you, UVM just got in trouble to do oh. it. Yeah, right. Oh. It, uh, and it, it, it does. If you were to, you know, they are hollow. It, yeah, they're hollow. And if you were to wrap on it, it definitely is different than wood for sure. It's a totally different sensation. These would have been solid. The I ones that are no, solid. These are. <coughs> I don't think these are solid. I think they're they're joined. Yeah, I oh, think they're okay. probably more like an inch thick, and they've been like glued together and then turned down. Yeah. Okay. Um, but these other columns. Are, and they're sort of made like a barrel. Like a barrel. Oh, I understand. Okay. These wooden ones. Yeah, the wooden ones are okay. Right. And then these composite ones are part of They are on the first circle. You cut them and they have like a little ornament detail. And then you have the kind of base. Okay. But just that's the point. They, they would sound very different. Well, my concern about the base is that it looks to me like these posts are sitting on. Maybe I'm wrong. They're sitting on uh, like 12 by 12 or 10 by 10, and uh, about two inches thick. They think most of them are spread Yeah, yeah. And They're some of them are detaching. Yeah. And I don't know whether those haven't been on there since 1910. Uh, but that's, it, a it, that's a replacement for. It's hard to tell what kind of a base it had. It might have had another big round, round a bigger round oval. At the base okay. of it? At the base. Huh. Well, whatever they put on there now, I want to express that it's appropriate for the circumstance to bear the weight and to not split the half. And we did talk about that. I did talk about that with them. You end up just using a two inch lumber, you can chamfer the edges and do things like that to make it look a lot nicer. Mm -hmm. okay. And it also helps in shed water. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. And I, I wouldn't know if you know, a bigger disc would be available, but that, that's what I would really expect to be the house of Kansas columns. The new old post there next to step two is pretty wobbly. 
rotted as well? I don't know that the, the base of it's rotted. I don't think that the wood post itself is rotted. Is it I would, I hope so, yeah. I mean, I would, if, if they told me that those uh, posts were in good shape, I would want to keep up. Yeah. They don't, they don't grow good. <laughs> No, they could be restored with a new base underneath. As Eric said, you could either find a, a round or uh, a square base with the edges tempered so that, again, it sheds water better and gives it a little bit better chance of lasting a while. And uh, doing some decorative painting on the Newell Post might be nice painting. Mm -hmm. I doubt if it was all one color. Yeah. We've been told that the roof is in, it's not separated from the house, so the work is going to be on the bottom. I think eliminating the orange shutters would be an improvement. That's it, from a color standpoint, just because there, if somebody stuck those on there at some point. Oh, okay. We haven't had a, I haven't had a look. Uh -huh. I think those are the only two rooms in the house. Yeah, they are. It didn't look like there were any on the side. Yeah. So somebody just did it as a little, yeah. as a little decor on the front. Yeah. Any comments, questions, suggestions? Do you want to designate anything on the on this, or I mean, they have a little bit of leeway, is, you know, for the basis of the existing post or replacing the post. And again, as as long as it, not, none of the appearance is changing, the did you want to change the railings on the stairs? Yes, yeah, so yes. I don't. Uh, I've looked around the neighborhood. Uh, some have wood railings. Some just have a single piece of wood. And it's, we wanted something to be, to be consistent with the house for the period. But frankly, we don't think we know what that is at this point in time. Whether it would be a wood railing with um, spindles or whatever. Spindles. Spindles, yeah. Um, or, uh, some people just take a an iron bar pole goes comes off the top and just follows the stairs down. It's just a single bar. I don't know. What do you think is more appropriate? Could be either. I I I, I think the wooden railings would. More appropriate. If you, if you you don't have any historic pictures of it. We do but, not. Yeah. There, no there are other houses on this our street which have well, the one directly across the street has a single metal bar that looks. Yeah. Well, the, on the front of the car, yeah, that's what we're doing. No, that's true. On the front, yeah, so we see different things in houses that seem to be similar or on the same area, but. We could give them the option of replacing the metal stair railings with wood railings that are compatible design to the remainder of the porch detail. That's fine. And an option to remove mm -hmm. the The other thing. Yes, we can, we can lose the shutters. I'm convinced now. <laughs> the, the other kind of quick suggestion is you use some, some kind of a rot resistant wood for, oh, for the oh. column bases. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, uh, Cedar would probably work just fine. It's not, it doesn't require a lot of strength through there. It doesn't. No, it's because it's just a post on top of a post. So that's a likely spot to rot. You know, if you just use pine or something, it's going to. So you're stripping the floor of the porch, right? They're going to go with natural, the go natural on the... Um, oh, you mean on the... Currently, the porch is painted with a teal right. color. Um, and I just want to that we're going to paint it. Yeah. Um, 
the, I, the natural finishes on the exterior don't do real well. It's, they, okay. they, they're affected by the ultraviolet light, uh, and if they get little pinholes in them, the water gets in and it, it delaminates. So well, painting would be a better option. That's a, hold on, are you saying it's natural, like clear, or are you saying polyurethane versus paint? Oh, I, I, the 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 poly well, polyurethane. I think just they don't last very long on the exterior. Just just for that reason, there's no ultraviolet protection, and they, they're such a, a strong film that it just if there's a pinhole in it, it just actually traps water. In it. Water will get in and out. I had a long go around with that on the porch. <laughs> Okay, paint, yeah, and, and the uh, traditional Vermont porch color the floor is gray, you know, sort of medium gray, but is that right, Liz? Yeah. Battleship gray. Yeah. Battleship gray. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't take that as a recommendation, but if you know, it's more traditional way. Would we, need, would we need to get separate warming uh, instead of arranged? I think what color you paint your porch floor. <laughs> what color are you painting the porch floor? It's entirely up to you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> I went around with painting this porch. I was talking about the whole weddings there. And the mother of the bride called up every week wanting to know what color should be because they, she didn't want it to class with her shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's my worst mother of the brides. <laughs> the other thing you can do is you can, there are so many shades of gray now that you can take a gray, you can start with a, a gray, uh, just a plain battleship type of a gray, but you can use your other colors and find a tint of the gray that's compatible with your other colors that might soften it a little bit in case the that battleship gray clashes. Mm -hmm. All right, very good. There's about a thousand shades of gray available yeah. now. Yeah. Great you popular. Book about it, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's only fifth. Somebody did. The, uh, yeah. it's, we ended up using a porch. It's a very large building. We ended up using stain. On, on the floor uh, because it doesn't then build up and peel because that needs to be painted up. It, it just doesn't, it's the same as paint really, it just doesn't have a feller in it. Okay. Solid stain. And so it doesn't, I mean, they have to paint this porch every year so it builds up. You won't have to paint here. A latex stain? <laughs> a latex stain or a water stain? Uh, I think they use a latex stain. We'll go through the criteria. There's a set of criteria for the application. Uh, preservation or reconstruction of the appropriate historic style of the, if the proposed projects in the historic district or involves an historic structure, acceptable. Harmony of exterior design, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed exterior materials, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed landscaping, not applied for in this application. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities. No lighting proposed, no change in lighting proposed. Recognition of and respect for view quarters and significant vistas, including gateway views of this city and state house, not at this location. All in favor of the application as proposed, raise your hand. get you to sign there above my name. Either one of you can sign. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Thank you very so much. much and good luck with your project. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.
I had the mother of Bright for a while, but I had the hardest time not laughing out loud. <laughs> she called me. I'm sure. <laughs> the great stories there. <laughs> the next application is for 108 State Street, Timberlake Associates. Come up and have a seat. And I'm assuming you're David. I'm Dave's in there, yes. Can you just okay. point the microphone yeah. at yourself? And describe your new signage. So we're uh, converting that gas station from a shell station to a Sunoco station. Um, Sunoco has got their standards like every other oil company, and they always ask us to, um, you know, create what they would like to see first. Are there going to be they two Sunocos up. right next door to each other? Uh, I think they're closing the other one. I don't think the other one's selling a lot of fuel or oh, okay. you know, the future is there for that location. So, I mean, not much different than when we had two shell stations. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, we've done quite a few of those uh, Sunocos in that company and actually enjoy the performance of their loyalty programs. So, they're asking for things like LED price signs and plastic faces and inserts and that kind of stuff. And so we're basically just refacing what's existing there, going from the existing shell sign to a Sunoco sign and adding the LED price sign. So the square footage is identical. I'm not necessarily a big lover of LED price signs when they don't work, they look like closed. They run power 24-7. Uh, there's a lot of lights in there. In fact, they burn more electricity uh, than, than fluorescent light bulbs, believe it or not. Um, most of them are not repairable. Um, I've got experience with these guys. Uh, you know, when you're dealing with major oil companies down in Texas, they're in bed with their Texas companies, okay? So you overpay for everything so that every component of a conversion I pay and so gets paid, our shell gets paid. And then they don't necessarily align themselves with the best LED companies that are out there. They're, they may all be Chinese made. Uh, but they're not replaceable. I can't go in there and actually replace the digits. So I've had a lot of frustration. There's plenty of LED price on companies where I can replace those, but those aren't the approved LEDs for the oil companies. Is there a recommendation you'd like us to make? Uh, no, I really would like you to approve it the way it is. Uh, you know, when it does burn out behind their back, I will put in the right LED sign. So, you know, they, they probably won't last five years because um, they're, on, they're on all the time. You know, when we're open. You know, of course, when a fluorescent bulb or an LED tube is out as off during the day, on the day, like the shell price on the day, those aren't running during the day because it's sunlight out. But the LED will have it on. And I don't even know why Efficiency Vermont incentivizes those because they actually work more power than fluorescent light bulbs. So, Mary, there's a question. Lit hmm. signs. Hmm? If I could walk away Lit. without the LED, without that, then I have to explain Lit signs the in downtown. The for why they didn't approve it. No. So the the way that the um, sign charts got drafted, there's some inconsistencies. So that myself, I as a zoning administrator, if there are inconsistencies, I have to um, you make know some sense it, out it, it makes some sense out of it, and usually in favor of the applicant if it is unclear what the Planning Commission wanted to do. So, um, you know, we've been allowing these electronic pricing signs in all of the zoning districts. If the Planning Commission has a problem with that, they've got a chance to change it coming up. They're not the Planning Commission, City Council, but well, it, I, they've just they've been. I, I don't really like the lit signs and yeah. downtown that been being on 24 hours a day. Well, not 24 hours. I mean, but when you're open. When we're yeah. open. But I'm not. They're easy to change, you know, so the manager can just sit there and change it from the store as opposed to climbing up ladders and changing numbers. Yeah. That, that part I like. Um, but when they start to burn out, you know, they don't look so good. How about the poles? Do you paint those? Yeah, just paint them. It's, you know, one shade of gray versus one shade of gray. Always. I wish they would just stick to, you know, standard. Um, rust oleum gray, not you know, invent their own shade, but they like to have that kind of. Just, that's a, it can't be the same, right? I mean, shell can't be the same as an outdoor mobile. Or, does the lit, uh, uh, does it go to cover the other grades of gasoline as the other one? 
Yeah, it's just a regular price. Yeah. yeah. They're only so, allowed. They're, they're probably not. all anybody cares about it anyway. Right. But. It's about it's about ninety percent of business. Are those colors the corporate colors? Yes. <laughs> right at, yeah, there's there's not right a whole lot. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot for you guys to look at, but we still have to run it by you. <laughs> I'm going to vote against the look sign. So. I, I, I I don't. Yeah, think I. They're really appropriate in downtown, and I I think whether it's a, I don't think we let anybody put a hanging sign over a store if it was lit. You know. The, the uh, upper sign is externally illuminated. That's all right. Yeah, that's all right. It's just yeah. the yeah. price sign. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, the, it's a bit of a gas station exemption to allow the the, yeah. the LED pricing sign, even though they're quote unquote internally lit. Okay. I can vote against what? Yeah, you can vote again. You guys can vote against it. Well, I just, uh, yeah. you know, it's. Is it just because of the downtown? Yeah, the big location in the downtown. I mean, you're. You're the only You're gas station outside of Perry's on State Street. What do they have? Do they have the LED? The city no. of the street? No. No. It's just unfortunate. It's right in the heart of the historic yeah. downtown. It's right. Yeah. It just yeah. sort of defeats the what everybody else tries to do in town as far as less lighting rather than more. Mm -hmm. This doesn't flash, way, does so it? if you if you deny it, um, we just go back to them and say that they denied it, and we have to propose the what, what's very consistent with what's there now. Mm -hmm. It'll probably save me a lot of electricity. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but I'm not saying my my reasons are not the same as yours, but I I just don't think. Right. And then you know to, again in favor of your downtown. This comes in, and then what? Do you think we've got an LED? We don't have any LEDs down there. Uh, movie theater really takes good care of its traditional. Uh, I was just using them as an example. Yeah, yeah. Does anybody else have LEDs mm -hmm. down there? The restaurants or I don't think so. Not like this. I don't think so. Restaurants have an LED pricer. Mm -hmm. What businesses can do is inside the window they can put whatever sign they want, and there's some that have LED open and closed mm -hmm. signs. Uh, but here. not on the exterior. Not on the right. exterior. Not sort of, you know, it's in the restaurant window. It's not hanging out in the street. Uh, and I guess my take is that there's nothing that says they can. Well, there's, there's, there's nothing in the regulations that clearly says that they can't do this, but you're also looking at your evaluation criteria. So if you're feeling that it is um, preservation you know, reconstruction yeah. of the appropriate historic style yeah compatibility probably. with subject property and adjacent properties. properties so there's a lot of there's some options unacceptable here. options yeah, even if it's just you guys going on you know even if It'll the zoning administrator money, still can't glad to <laughs> deny the permit. We can throw the recommendation in too. Is the other thing? I, I have to pay for this too, so yeah. just because it's not going high, so I'm putting it open. So. But does the other Sunoco have one? Yeah, and have an LED? Digital pricing on, on, the other on side. River Street. Yeah, right on the other yeah. side. It's yeah. on the, the other side. Doesn't have it. But it's in the district. Um. I, I think there's a real difference between Memorial Drive, yeah, and the State, State Street at downtown. Because one of well, because one of your criteria is with the adjacent properties and right in the area, so it's a it's a bit of a toss up. I mean, that's part of the that's been a Sunoco station for yeah. problems that I had with telling I'm people that it, when it wasn't clear in the in my chart of where different signs are allowed, when you start interpreting it and you're in well. It's not really clear that it's only allowed in this one area for new ones, and you've got all these others that are already here. Well, there's none other, no others not on, on State the Street. Street. There's none others right. on, on State That's Street, really the, which is the heart of the right. historic downtown. Yeah. So historic versus also the design review district, more broadly, right? So this goes up in the central one, not down the creek, so yeah. all the steam so. so. Hard to 
decide without setting precedents as well. So I'll go through the criteria. Well, we're, we're as Steve said at the beginning, we recommend to the development review board. Or to us. And again. On this one, it'll go to us, to the zoning so administrator. So this, this is a, a recommendation. We're advisory. So, so this is the final decision, but it's advisory to the next step. Yep. So 1A, preservation of reconstruction of the appropriate historic style. If the proposed project's in the historic district or involves an historic structure, it's in the district. So we'll say it's unacceptable in the district. Sorry. And then maybe just explain that it's just the LED price part. Sorry, but it's not an historic sign anyway, so it's never been almost not applicable. I don't care. Not in keeping. Yeah. I'll actually use your own words. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and what I'll do is I'll take the recommendation back and go to Mike and hash it out to see what we actually, how we actually deal with it in the I, I mean, we can make what recommendations we want to. They could be overturned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, it works. If he agrees with it, then it just goes through you. Right? Harmony of exterior de design <laughs> with other properties in the district, also unacceptable. Compatibility proposed exterior materials, LED, again, unacceptable. Compatibility proposed landscaping, none proposed in this application. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials, also unacceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, and again, LED lighting, unacceptable. Recognition of and respect for view quarters and significant vistas, including gateway views of the city and state house. Is, is the other side of the sign lit as well? Yes, both sides. Both sides. Both sides. So it does, I think it does get in the way of the vista. Compatibility, oh, conformance with cityscape placement and design recommendations. Compatibility, also unacceptable. Compatibility with subject property and adjacent properties, unacceptable. Shall not obscure significant architectural details. It's not a problem there. Consistency and form uniformity of multiple signs in CB2 and OP districts, not applicable. Illumination, internally lit plastic signs prohibited. Pendants and banners not applicable. Individual letters affixed, painted, or engraved directly on the building or structure are encouraged. So unacceptable. You All see in a hotel, you know, putting up an LED, you know, oh. ninety-nine dollars a night, or yeah. I just yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. that's turning into Las Vegas, you know. Yeah, it's I mean, like, it, it, <laughs> it gets into. <laughs> this is also this is sort of a gas station specific allowance, but. It's problematic when you start getting into the downtown. Yep. So all in favor of the applications proposed, raise your hand. All opposed. <laughs> so it gives you something so, but, to work but, but, with. But, but you just prefer the old style, you know? Just so the, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. It's so it's, it's opposed to the application, but he, they don't have to come back if they switch to the old style pricing, right? Unless you want to come back. No, I was so. And they'll have to yeah, draw I, think, I would think that's an administrative thing if yep. they just change the whole go. Okay. Now that we know what, what you're against. Michelle was trying to do that to me too until I flew into Miami. And then I saw this gigantic shell station right right there. We pull out with the rental cars mm -hmm. are, and it's not LED. <laughs> it's all just insert numbers. So I came back to them and said, I'm not putting things in, I'm putting the old style. Yep. If you can do that in Miami, you can do it in Vermont. So they are just backed off. Good. They right. use a lot less electricity, it costs a lot less money. Yeah. Just, so okay. you're gonna need to sign that and then give it back to me. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Thank you. Thank very you. Much. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, the first person uh, we've seen so smile. I just want to smile their yeah. <laughs> so, Dave, this yes. one's going to take a little time because I'm out of the office tomorrow and the planning director's out of the office tomorrow, and he and I are going to have to confer on this one to figure out how we're dealing with it. Probably in no hurry. Okay. Yeah, we'd like to wrap it up. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. We'll go to the next application for 29 Main Street. Eric Bigglestone, SB Sign Zinc. And introduce yourself. I'm Courtney Boutin from SB Signs. 
spell your last name? B-O-U-T-I-N. can be tinted so yeah, that it so replicates be, the faded. It's yeah. not going to like pop out bright right. and, neon on it. You have to use exterior paint. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So yeah. 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 <laughs> he feels pretty strongly about this. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, nothing's there. So. No, no changes to lighting. Just keep the lighting that's there. Yep, is this lighting already things. on the front? Yep. And those are just those are saying it's, yep. it is. Um, we're painting and patching the um, the sign down below the moving, and then just reinstalling the um, the flat cut letters. So just the uh, just the new steps that are there. Any comments, questions, suggestions? Actually, I think they did a nice job yeah. in sizing and the colors. And the logo is actually the script. Kind of no, it the does. The script is More better, and it yeah. doesn't have a yes, no a logo, Long but right here, yeah. logo. Yeah. So we'll go down through the criteria: preservation or reconstruction of the appropriate historic style of the proposed projects in the historic district involves an historic structure. Uh, we'll say it's acceptable in the historic district. Harmony of exterior design with other properties in the district, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed exterior materials, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed landscaping that proposed in this application. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials, acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities. There's no change in any of the utilities, so none in this application. Recognition of and respect for view quarters and significant vistas, including gateway views of the city and state house, acceptable. Conformance with cityscape placement and design recommendations, acceptable. 
compatibility with subject, subject property and adjacent properties acceptable. Shall not obscure significant architectural details acceptable. Consistency and uniformity of multiple signs in CB2 and OP districts not applicable. Illumination internally lit is not acceptable, but this one is, there's actually the illumination is existing acceptable, and I'll just write existing. Pennants and banners not applicable. Individual letters affixed, painted, or engraved directly on the building or structure are encouraged, acceptable. All in favor of the application as proposed, raise your hand. Did Walgreens buy out writing? And just above my name, I need your signature. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. And minutes. Anybody have any questions or suggestions for the May 29th minutes? <coughs> Wasn't there. Yep, we've got Steve, Liz, and Seth, so we've got enough. Good. Make a motion to approve. Just did. Yeah. Okay, second. All in favor? Raise your hand. All abstain. It's approved. Uh, Make the more there. And on Liz June the 3rd. Ben. My recollection of June the 3rd, I'm sort of going back to the old comp, yeah, 101 Northfield Street. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, it says that the, uh, the last paragraph, I, the existing sign base, may be either left in place after the sign is moved or totally removed once it's relocated. My recollection was that uh, we... Or totally removed. Oh. Down here. Right, so where it is... Right, so the existing sign base in the thing. The planter. Yeah. Uh, my recollection was that we recommended... Recommended removal. Complete removal. Okay, but you didn't give them the option of either? I, I guess I'd have I to go back and... Well, I mean, it's, I'd have to go back and look. I'll, I'll, go back and I'll go back to the recording and check it. Okay. Um, and look at the and look at the form that we filled we'll out. More strongly, though, um, says I drive by it every day. Well, the, the other problem apart, is ugly and it, well, the other thing to note is that they never actually gave us a sign application. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they may not actually do anything with the sign because if they move it, chances are they have to shrink it. They haven't given me the size dimensions, mm -hmm. but. The, the current size, if it's bigger than currently allowed under the regs, it's grandfathered unless they move it. If they move it, they basically have to do a whole new sign, sign to shrink it down. So probably chances are you're just going to keep looking at it the way it is. Because I talked to them and they said if they have to shrink it to move it, yep. they're not going to move it. And this is the con discussion I had with the contractor at the beginning, and he originally had dropped the sign idea because he was like, oh, they're not going to want to do that but it got left, that little notation got left in the application. That's why we never got a sign application. So. You can always go the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I, I have a feeling that it's gonna bigger happen. than allowed because the max size, I think, is 12 square feet. And I think that's bigger than 12 square feet on one size. All right. So chances are you're okay, going to keep so looking at it anyway. So the sign base is going to stay anyway unless but they come. I'll, and, I'll and check to make sure the minutes yeah, do another I guess, sign. I guess. They'll have to come back with an application for the sign anyway, um, right? As, as long as the only thing you would be reviewing would be this okay. size and content would be us. As okay. long as they weren't adding some other funky lighting something, yep. we would take this and approve it. So I'll get this fixed Okay. Um, to make sure it fits. And more, it's just regardless of my own, just my recollection was yep. that I did recommend that it be removed. So I'll look, I'll go back to the record. I could be totally wrong. Okay. Well, you want to do that and then let us know, and then we'll approve it based yep. on what I'll, yeah. I'll, okay. I'll tweak it and we'll bring these back. Okay, good. 
Anything else? Next Monday. Uh, to approve the minutes. Oh, we're not. We're not going to. We're going to bring these ones back. Table that until table she comes days. back with it. Ne next Monday is the meeting with the finance commission. Mm -hmm. Yes. Next Roll Monday. New, new reg. At what time? Five thirty. Five thirty. Five thirty. Okay. Yep. Originally, I had six, and I got the time wrong. <coughs> Sorry. About okay. That. It's 5 here. Five thirty here next Monday. <coughs> yeah. Okay. So you have the pleasure of on that another meeting. This is uh, just to go over the regulations. The new regulations of the planning commission. I mean, you guys all have those regs. So I'll recirculate send again. Them again. Okay, that would be Great. good. Yep. And, and, and it's just an exciting read. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's also, I've, I've read them so many times I can't read them again. It's, for, it's good for insomnia. The, the planning commission wants to make sure it gets everybody's input since yep. you guys are going to be implementing them. Okay. And also, you know see what what may need how much work they're going to have to do to get it going forward um and i think one of the big questions is going to be can they adopt the new design review regulations without also adjusting district boundaries i think that's going to be part of the discussion so it's something to just think about we, we pur I, purposely did not do the boundaries we thought we ought to have the regulations first mm -hmm. and then and then, uh, <laughs> and then the, work, and the, the, the planning commission should really be setting the boundaries, probably in conjunction with the historic preservation commission yeah. and design review. Uh, that's that's probably the most touchy issue. Yeah, that way, people who, when you start talking about adjusting boundaries, people know what they're getting into, yeah. what they're signing up for. Right. That makes sense. What's the status of the garage? Days the front porch for it. <laughs> um, everything's still being everything's still an appeal. You know, I mean, the Act 250, oh, pardon, the Act 250 decision got issued, and then they appealed it. Um, the design review board decisions are still an appeal. There's summary judgment motions happening. Um, I think there's the city filed two summary judgment motions. I don't think the deadline for the responses to those have happened yet. So it's courts, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, it's it's it is what it is once it hits litigation. Okay. So the hotel is going. Is it in stasis or? Yeah, the hotel can't be built without the garage because there's no parking for the hotel. Have there been any input from insurers on how long they're willing to hold on? I, I, I am not privy to any of those kinds of discussions, which is probably a good thing. I had a comment. <laughs> yeah. Word on the street. That's not yeah, I mean, there's all sorts of word on the street. I'm not going to. Yeah. I, I what you hear yeah. is the same thing that sure I hear. Sheriffs have enough invested in it. I was talking to somebody. They have enough invested in it. That they're, they're not going to bail immediately. Yeah. Well, and it's also, uh, if you look at the substance of what's being appealed, my thought is that there's there's not a whole lot there where a court couldn't find a solution and get the permit issued with a few tweaks here and there. That's what mainly I I try to keep up on is mainly the process that the city followed in issuing the bond and the the information that was presented in various applications. And, I don't think that's a killer either, though. I don't know enough. That's lawyer's business. Yeah, that's my understanding, but again, I, I, I'm not, I have not never practiced law with this, so we'll see. All right, just curious. So, yeah, it okay. continues. Yeah. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? So, so moved. Second. All in favor of adjournment, raise your hand. <laughs> the meeting is adjourned.